G'day, partners. Welcome to the Stakes Day uh, preview show slash podcast. Uh, Pete's currently getting hailed on there in Paran with all his trendy mates and uh, myself down Bayside. It's pretty sunny and beautiful. So um, God knows what's happened in Flemington. The track scene will be able to handle everything that's been thrown at us so far this week. We've got the rail at nine metres. Uh, expect it races pretty consistently to what it's been doing thus far. Um we're going to preview races five, which is the Daly Sprint, race six, which is another race, race seven, and then race eight. Uh, we'll get you the names of them as we get to them through the show. This show is brought to you by puntingform.com.au. Uh, we all use punting form, and so should you. Peter, how did you pull up after yesterday, where we where we played from in front for the majority of the day, but managed to give away the lead at the death? Um, I think we have to talk about... The Oaks on the deep dive on Monday, it's a fair bit to digest from that race, for you and I personally. Thoughts? Yeah, exactly right. Um, I guess it was a bit of a frustrating day in that, you know, uh, it did seem that you needed a bit of cover there with the, the wind playing a bit of havoc towards the end of the card, but I'm expecting probably similar on Saturday, to be honest. But, uh, look, yeah, I think the, the, the late betting moves, we'll, we'll touch on those on the deep dive, but... Uh, there was there was a couple on the on the day that seemed to raise some interest. I'll put it that way. Yeah, we might also touch on race three at Warrnambool too on today, which is Friday. Have a good look at that on the deep dive if we get time. Punters, we're going to start with the Dali Sprint Classic, twelve hundred meters, Group One, weight for age. There's the market. Um, the speed map shall follow. Santa Annalaine Nature Strip Alize in her time come from the Everest. Uh, Loving Gabby wins the Manicato and comes here. The Bostonians from that same race, I believe. Um, Rock Magic flew. And Malibu Style, who just doesn't run a bad race, now cops D. Oliver. And Zutori gets D. Lane back. So what are we doing here, Pete? There's lots of different angles to this race, isn't there? Oh, yeah, just... For a small field, there's a lot of angles. Yeah, probably the simplest and... I think that's probably what you should do with this race is just keep it very simple. Sandra and Elaine does come from, I guess, the strongest overall race which out, out of the lead-ups, which was the Everest, but it does have the SB profile over Nature Strip, over In Her Time and over Alizé, despite Alizé being absolutely truckloaded late on the day. We did touch that on the deep dive. But look, Sandra and Elaine, uh, track slash distance record is very strong. Um, in Her Time, at her best, would possibly figure as well. I'm just not sure the horse is there. And Zatori's run some good figures at the same course and distance, but really for me, Sandra and Elaine does seem to tick the most boxes. Uh, Nature Strip would need an absolute perfect ride out in front to to try and steal it. Uh, I'm just not sure some of the others are going to be as well suited as, as uh, old Santos. Yeah, having said that, look, I would prefer Nature Strip was ridden by Tim Clark, who I think is an outstanding ride of leaders, and he showed that at the Everest on in the Everest. Completely agree. But at the same time, when they when J Max tries to go probably a little bit slower, is our sort of read. That's not going to help horses like Nature Strip, uh, like our Santana Lane or Elise. Uh I think you can get rid of Nature Strip from the Everest, and you can focus on Santana Lane. But uh, I'll be half keen to find Elise from the yard rather bet less at bigger odds on a horse that's got unlimited ability and maybe still on the out, whereas Santa Ana Lane's been up for a long time. Yep. I, I agree in her time, sort of hard to find. Zatori, Rock Magic, and Malibu style. I could be tempted to have a small like, quarter unit on from the yard if they paraded outstanding. That's about it for that race for me, Pete. Anything else? Yeah, no, no real interest as a betting race for me. Race number six, partners, is the Matriarch Stakes, 2,000 metres, group two, set weights with penalties, four-year-olds and up, mares, great. There's the market. We've got the speed map to follow. Peter, what I are you thinking? I was trying to focus on horses that had current form over the distance so far this preparation. I'll tell you what, I found it quite difficult to find any. Um, that seemed to fit the profile for things that I look for. Um, in the end, I ended up siding with Dance, 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 and I want to have something on another dollar as well. They were the two that I ended up focusing on. Uh, dance, Dance, Dance has uh, the SP over Rondinella, if you go back to the last time they met, which was in March, which is a little bit of a while ago, but it also 
did run last start over the distance, recorded a good figure off a strong tempo, but vitally has an extra week off compared with some of the other horses coming off the same brutal type of uh, tempo. So I'm keen to have something on Dance, 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 and, and we'll have something smaller on another dollar. I'll Dutch those two. Well, they're the only two in the field who are back to mare's grade here. Um, I think the race... I think the market allows you to, to find a few angles. Girl Juice Date, I think, deserves to be near the top of it, but it's pretty sure, as is Rondanella. I think there's a horse here, Spanish Reef, who deserves to be much shorter than $16, and she'd be my on-top selection. Uh, she was incredibly brave in that race with um, Princess Jenny and Melody Bell. Well, if those horses are in this race, they'd be dominant favourites. Um, I think Fidelia strikes a race that will suit and could improve. I think Miss Siska was big odds at 41s. I think she'll start around 20s. Um, I agree, another dollar and dance, dance, dance. Look very well placed here. Um, in run, if Graceful Glamour crossed and led comfortably, I'd want to be with it, but I don't think it will. Again, as much as I love Benny Gladrat Mellon, she gave that thing an absolute peach at the valley we were on. Um, a young woman, I can't remember her name, but she gave a really good ride. Rachel King. Rachel King's an outstanding ride, so it's not really a positive jockey change considering how well it was ridden last start. Deep race, but um, we'll try and pick a few of them apart from the yard because a few of these have been up a little while. Horses that I've mentioned, basically the ones I've got a good profile on. So we'll try and find an angle from the yard. Race seven, Pete. This is the this is the Network Ten Chatham Stakes, Pete. Four hundred meters. I don't even know what that means. Neither do I, really. Chat ham. There's the market. Here's the speed map for follow. What are you going to do here? Admiral's Joker seems pretty short to me, Pete. Yeah, it certainly does. I I didn't actually expect it to be favourite. Um, just purely off the off the data, it is yet to to meet something that's approaching a really strong tempo up front. Um, I could make it a smaller case for a few of the runners, but I think a few of them, like Iconoclasm, that's well well enough found for me. Uh, Reykjavik, I think, probably in the same. Not sure the inside gate's going to be overly suitable. I found it a pretty tricky race to pull apart. In the end, I actually sided with Haunted. I thought stepping up to 1,400 would probably be more suitable. Happy with the wider gate. KMAC just needs to slot it in somewhere. Hopefully just midfield or just slightly worse than midfield would be ideal. Um, save it up and get that bit of cover. Outside of that, I was gravitating towards horses like Widgie Turf, Reykjavik, but again, both those inside gates, not sure they'll be suitable. Iconoclasm ran some really strong splits late that I thought was appealing, but again, 550 is probably short enough for a horse that has struggled to, to win over the last couple of years. And um, that's probably in the end, I, that's the way I'll go. Just ba- basically try and look for Haunted here. What are you doing, Noble Boy? Um... I was prepared to take it on despite the strong splits it has run at stages so far this prep and it ha- has a uh, history of being able to handle big early tempo if they do fly along. It's been able to do that previously but I just had to take it on given Gate 11 and Brody Loy. I am in your corner re-haunted. I think the race sort of sets up pretty well for it outside the fact that it's drawn 12 and it needs a little bit of luck early on but I, I just think I think Tom Melbourne can win I know that sounds stupid to say but I just think it's going to get a really really nice run it's a horse with good ability and I think that the the clear like bet in this race for me each way is Streets of Avalon it's drawn 13 which is a tick it, it cops Ben Mellum on for Zach Spain off which is another tick uh, it'll lead and make its own luck you know, provided it's not torturous like wind wise like it was on Thursday which is half like um, tipped to be by the uh, bomb. But I like to wait and see. I, I think this horse can can run a really strong race. I think it's a really nice each way bet. Streets Avalon. There's nothing here that really wants to take it on the lead. I think it's going to get a really nice ride from Benny Mellum and be hard to catch. It's at top now. It's a big horse. You've seen it a few times now, Pete. It's not a little thing like a copper heap of racing. This horse. I think it's ready to do something. It drops back from like fierce impact form. Pretty strong form. It's a, it's an interesting uh, proposition, isn't it? Because while the wind might be a factor, we may also find that the inside of the track is still, or that getting first access to the inside, say, a couple of lanes, might very well be suitable on the day. So 
Uh, I guess it just means you have to time your run absolutely perfectly. But as you said, if there's not much pressure on it up front, you might be able to get away with that in this race. But we'll see. We won't pr- try and preempt what the, the weather's going to do on Saturday because it looks absolutely uh, cast. I'll put it that well, way. Well, how can we preempt the weather when it's hailing where you are and it's sunny where I am and we live 30 minutes apart? So. Yeah. You'd be, be mad to do that. Now, race eight is the – what are they calling this race now? The McKinnon? Yeah, the McKinnon. The McKinnon, Pete. Um, there's, a, there's a market, punters. It shall be followed by a speed map, which is the puntingform.com.au speed maps. If you want to get it, you can adjust them to have you like them. Um, it's an outstanding tool. The Kiwi, your girl, you declared her on the uh, previous show leading into her dominant victory where she beat Princess Jenny and uh, Spanish Reef, painfully. And Aristia was in second, who's also in this race. Declaring it again here, the, the little kiwi. Uh, not not so much. I thought its best uh, distance was the mile. Two thousand meters did run a really strong two thousand meter trip last prep, but that was on a heavy track. So unless the track really disintegrates, I won't necessarily be following her. It's it's one of those things where I got the cash at a very similar quote last week. <clears throat> in fact, at a better quote. I, there's no way I'm jumping into shorter here again in the uh, in the open group one. Um, not to say that she couldn't win it, but it's just to say that I think there's a few better horses that she's meeting this time around. Uh, in the end here, there's one horse I'm really keen to have a look at, and that's Magic Wand, purely just because it's backing up off Tuesday in the Cup. Uh, it was a relatively soft Cup, let's face it, given the uh, the overall tempo that we get the, the leisure of seeing in puntingform.com.au's review. Um, it does have SP over four runners in this field, um, mind you, I'm not sure they're necessarily the strongest runners, but one of them is still Kings Will Dream, which is another horse that I have time for in this field. So they're probably the two that I, I want to have a look at in the yard. Um, if I'm going to, to have a crack at one at slightly longer price, it would be Debt Agent, which used to be known as Debt Collector in Singapore. Um, we'll get right back in the field, but again, if it's able to get a bit of cover and Rod can weasel, weasel his way through the, the field. It might be finishing stronger. So they're the three did, I'm keen to it find. Did do a, it did do some nice work late there, that old debt thing. Mm. Okay. I reckon this is an extra moral punish. Kings will dream. John 13, J-Mac, he's hungry. He hasn't ridden anything of note throughout the carnival. This is his last chance. This horse was very, very strong when ridden awfully, I thought, in, in the Cox Plate. Not awfully, but it was never like allowed to do anything and what it did it was an it was awesome uh, i love the way it finished off i think bray the pig will be um on the microphone here for last group one collect another trophy uh 50 stars has a harder run here than it had previously night's watch from one if it jumps well i'll be getting on in run in the first 100 meters if it misses the start i'm off um i thought that suzuka Devious. I like what it did through the line in the uh, last start it ran in. Um, I, I think it's going to get out to big odds, and I'll probably be getting something out of it. Maybe even Harlem. But I, I'm a, firmly against his favourite. I was against the last start, and I was wrong, and I'm not going to be jumping on now at a shorter price in a harder race. Yep, I agree. Best bet and the value bet, Peter. I'll go first. My best bet is Kings Will Dream in the McKinnon. My value bet can be Stress Avalon in the whatever it's called at race number seven. Um, what do you what do you got, my man? Uh, I'm gonna. My best value is in the last in race nine. More wanted for uh, Damien Lane and Peter Chow. The Chowster. Uh, very. It's got good enough track and distance stats. Goes all right first up after a spell. Huge jockey change. Like, it's the first time it's actually had a jockey sitting on board. Um, it seems to just love Flemington. So at currently what thirty one dollars you can get on one of the. <coughs> On one of the corporates, although that is the one that that does tend to snip you, uh, but it is also thirty one dollars. No, there's the thirty one at Top Sport and three six five. Oh, beautiful Top Sport it is. Uh, that that's my my best value on the card. There is also thirty ones at Sportsbet, but they'll deduct you when yeah, that's, they that's come the scratch and scratch out because that they get away with the moral. That's activity. the one I was talking about. Uh, look, I, I think the best. It is pretty short, but I think True Self and Race Four. I've tried to look at that race from all different angles, and it still just lobs with Ryan Moore jumping on board for John Allen, which I think is like one of the greatest jock upgrades you could possibly have at the moment. Um, I, I think 
out of all the the shorties on the card, that's the one I'm keenest to to be with. Um, cool. All right. I wish I didn't give away more wanton. Now we've got to make a decision before we publish this. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, Esperance, I thought profiled to run a really big race, but Tio Nugent's not riding very well at the moment. Yeah. You- Disagree with me, go and watch race three at Warnable today, punters. I thought Morrissey was a uh, better, out of the two horses coming for the 9.55, actually the three horses, but a good yarn's probably not going to get a start. But I thought Morrissey was the better 9.55 to 1,100 metre proposition than Esperance. And ju- just for transparency, punters, my best bet that outside of the race that we previewed is race three, race two, number eight, Star Caster. I think it and Grinzing a star are the only two chances in that race. Completely agree. Back one, save the other. By the many I'm Alex, I might flip if I have to, but I don't want to. I'm already on Starcaster at the big odds. Yeah. All right, punters, enjoy yourselves. That's probably the last time you're going to hear my voice on a show. Actually, we're doing the deep dive. That'll be the last time. <laughs> might I'll go into a paddock for was, a couple of months. I was going to say, might get one more out of you on next Thursday for Sandown Cup. We might do a bit of Sandown and Ascot that day because I'll be back at Ascot for Champion Phillies Day next Shadow Day.